started the recording. Let's take a moment to pray together, and then we will start. Um, could one of us pray? Uh, maybe uh, whoever has a mic, okay, uh, could just pray, and then we will start, please. Kanan, your mic is okay? Want to pray? Or Dave or Karen? All right. Karen, why don't you pray? And we'll start. Yes, yes. Okay. Father, we come before your throne and we want to say thanking you, Father God, for everything. Thanking you, Father God. Father God, give you wisdom and knowledge, Father God, to the subject that we can understand and, and uh, uh, use to your kingdom work and help and guide, Father God. Thanking you, rest of the time, submitting to you and take care of what you say. Thanking you, Almighty Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Amen. Okay, thank you. Good morning, everyone. So we are now in our almost our last section in this course on uh, uh, media and technology. So this section we are talking about um, technology systems or software systems that um, we could use, uh, technology platforms that we could use, uh, and I'm just giving you an overview, and I will put everything down in a document, share it with you, but I'm just letting you see some of the systems that we have been using, which we can use uh, for ministry work. So we started last week, or we spoke about uh, software for office work, uh, like basically using Google uh, personal productivity tools, um, or the Google apps that come for free can, can be a very good starting point. Then we talked about I made mention of our accounting software that we use, uh, Tally software, uh, uh, which we use in India, and there could be other systems in other parts of the world. And then we started talking about the software for people management. And for that, I uh, was just showing you what we were using for uh, uh, what we were using here uh, for people management, which is uh, the Rock. RMS, the Rock Relationship Management System, which we have customized for our use, and we call it the uh, Church Management System. And uh, so in that, uh, we have uh, all the data, all the information uh, of uh, church people as and when they, uh, they uh, uh, they come come to church or get connected to church. Uh, we uh, we have their data, and then from there we follow up with them. We can, um, you know, uh, work, uh, follow up with them, meet with them, interact with them, so on and so forth. Right. So uh, this is a, a very useful um, uh, system to have, and um, I just wanted to uh, just share a little bit more on what what we do. So, uh, uh, and then we will move on into some other things. So let me just, you know, I'm just walking you through the system itself so you get an idea. Uh, of course, I will mention, I will, in, in the document that I give you, I will mention the, the product so that, you know, at some point, if you want to use it, you can download, customize it, make it. But let me just show you uh, some of the things that, uh, that we do with this. <clears throat> so, uh, this is our, uh, this is the church management system which I had. Uh, we were talking about um, uh, last week, which I was showing you, and uh, you know, I was just saying, okay, so you know, it shows you the list of people who have birthdays. Uh, even there's one Bible college student here whose birthday is today. And, um, these are the people, so I can wish them. And we have uh, member care people who will greet them on their birthday, send them a message. And uh, some very important uh, or other useful things that we set up with is, 
you know, we have our first time visitors um, information. So when people, uh, this is uh, some test information is happening, but so what happens is uh, the way we've set it up is from our church website. So if you go, go, go to our church website and we have a first time visitor form, you know, so uh, we tell people, you know, you could, if you are new to our website or you're new to church, uh, please fill up the, you know, a form, simple. They just give their name, the email ID and so on, and they submit. So what happens is, so it's a simple form that we have on our church website, right? APCWR.org, connect, first time visitor. So anybody could fill it up. Maybe somebody just came to the website or you know, during Sunday service, we tell people, and if you're watching online, please go uh, fill up this form so they can fill it up. And that data comes right into this system, right? And it comes to our FTV list, right? And uh, uh, so what happens is, uh, we can see the data here. Now, th these are just test people here, but there are others who've put in their data. And, you know, over time, we, we have the data. And then um, we have uh, we have our person in the church office who can actually, uh, they will follow up with this data, right? And uh, they can uh, immediately, uh, on Monday, Tuesday of the week, uh, they can go in, they can make the calls to these uh, first time visitors. So that's something very useful that you can do when you, you know, when you have a, a people management system, uh, you, you know, so there is no, uh, so basically what I'm trying to say is that um, uh, you can integrate that people management system to your church website, just like what we've done, so that uh, it goes directly in here. Now, like I mentioned uh, last time, our the same church management system is also used for our Bible college. So even our Bible college website. So if you go to our uh, Bible college website, where we have uh, right now it's off because we're not uh, taking applications, but we have our online application, right? So. Uh, Usually there will be a button here where people could apply online. So we will open up that button and um, apply online button, say in the month of uh, uh, maybe around June or something. So we will op open up. Uh, so, okay, open June 1. So June 1 to July 15, people can, the application will be open. And uh, so when they apply here, again, when they go through the application form, that whole form and data go straight into Rock RMS, right? Bible College. So their data will, what did I do here? Yeah. So their data will go into the applicants. Of course, uh, there's nothing now, right now, because uh, we're not taking anything, but their data will come in here and it'll show up here once we open up the application. So once again, what we are doing is uh, uh, all data is going straight into that management system. So we are, you know, there is no uh, paper form. So we used to have paper forms some years ago, maybe before we had a Bible college website. So, pe you know, people had to fill up an application and they would mail it to us or they will come and give it physically in the church office, and then we have to store it somewhere and all those kinds of things. So it was all paper driven in, in the past. But then now from our website and make people make application, it goes straight into the same system, but it is, it is you know, it is categorized in a different way. So these are Bible college students, these are first time visitors. And so we have them, you know, separately. We can go and look at these lists and work with those lists separately right and uh, the other additional thing is that we can do is when uh, now just one side note this e-learning portal is a separate portal we will we will i will share, discuss with you about that software itself uh, that's a totally different thing the if you go to our e-learning portal 
uh, this is our e-learning portal. Now, when people sign up here, uh, that data is maintained in this e-learning system itself because uh, you know it, it tracks you know everything like every course that they're doing and gives them their certificates for each course and all that. But that their data is also connected back to their Bible College student data right? because the same student could be uh, studying here on the e-learning portal, uh, doing the course here on the e-learning portal, and some students uh, may also be doing, you know, maybe doing online classes on. But it's the same student, same email ID, which they can use. Uh, I will talk about this one a little later. Right. So right now I'm talking about our church management system, and what I was saying was this system can be connected to various websites like our church website, our Bible college online application, uh, data coming from the e-learning. It can all come into the same place so that you can manage uh, personal data, people data in one uh, central place, right? So it's very, very useful. The other thing is when people are, it can make life easier for people when they are applying for, or not applying, when they are uh, registering for events. So for example, uh, you know, we have a event. Uh, so let me go here. We have a workshop coming up. So uh, Christian Professionals Ministry Workshop, somebody wants to register. Right. If they enter their mobile number, I can pull up their data. So double nine example. I'm just entering my right. So double nine uh, six zero. So it should. Yeah. So you see, I entered my mobile number and my name, my email address was defaulted already. Now we could, of course, we could, of course, default this, and uh, because I go on different church locations, uh, my church location is no thing. But um, the moment I put my mobile number, I was able to retrieve my name and my email address, right? So it makes it a little easy. And of course, there's a lot more information about, you know, the, uh, in this. But where where is this information coming from? It's coming from this system here, right? So uh to help people you know it just makes this is a very simple example but you know uh, uh, you can con you can connect to that same people data from various points and uh, you could you know you could use it to make life easier for people in in, in various situations right so right. this is just an example of uh, uh, of registering for a upcoming workshop that I can actually pull up that person's data and help them in their process. Now, of course, if that person who's registering, if it, that person didn't exist in uh, this system, our church management system, of course, we, we won't, there's nothing to show. We, we won't be able to um, uh, do anything with that. But in the case where their mobile number is here, we can pull up their data. So uh, these are some useful things. The other thing that we are also doing is certificates, you know, from the church. Example, uh, water baptism certificate. So uh, when people register for water, water baptism, okay, um, we, uh, we, we can, uh, so they, they, they register here. Let me see membership class yeah so for membership class when people register for membership class um what uh, what let me just talk about membership class and then i'll talk about water baptism so when people register so when people want to become members right they have to register uh, they have to do, attend a membership class and so they register for their membership class uh, and let me The same same thing happens, uh, but only thing is, um, 
but this is going to happen on the 26th of March. So people can register for membership class, right? So when they say register, when they click register, there that data comes in here. So we know uh, who is attending membership class. So once they have attended the membership class, we have automated their membership certificate. That means once they finish, they sorry, once they uh, complete all the membership requirements, part of which is attending the membership class, then you know uh, we check that all the other things are all done. Then we can give them their membership certificate. Of course, it'll go to them by email, but it'll also be attached to their record in the system. Right. So they certificate is now attached to the record in the system you know they in case they lose um, the email or they lose a certificate it's all, always here for them uh, in this system for them to come back and retrieve it and we, we will give them access to it uh, the same thing we are doing uh, when it comes for water baptism so um, if people so we, we do the same thing. So if people register for water baptism, they come here and they register online for water baptism. We just had one a uh, uh, couple of Sundays ago, two Sundays ago. Um, they register here. They enter their baptism consent form. They register here. That data goes straight into our system. Right? And, uh, and uh, then from here, let me see where it, I'm not sure exactly where it goes. Um, from here, we're able to uh, give them their, maybe it's all already been processed. So I'm not able to see that separate list. So what will happen is it comes in here um, as a list of people who have come for the water baptism. Once they are done, then we uh, give them their, uh, we say, okay, yeah, uh, we give them their, we say, yeah, this person attended the water baptism, send them their certificate. So what happens is their water baptism certificate is attached to their personal record in the system. And of course, also emailed to them, right? So uh, we, we are using the system in many ways. We are using it uh, for, let's say, a first time visitor enters, the data comes straight into the system. It doesn't go, get lost anywhere. Uh, when people are registering for certain, uh, like a membership class or for water baptism, it comes into the system. We, once it's done, uh, automatically a certificate is generated, a PDF, and is given to them. It is attached to their record. Uh, we also use that data for uh, registering for events. So when people want to register for a workshop or a conference, uh, if they're already in the system, uh, it makes them makes it easy for them to register for those events. So this data that we have collected uh, and that we are maintaining of our congregation people and also people outside uh, is 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 being used in many different ways to serve the people better. Okay, uh, and uh, whether we store their uh, certificates, whether it's membership, water baptism. Uh, where we also record interactions from our member care team. When our member care team calls them, we can record against them. Look, you know, so we call them, uh, this is what they need or this is what they said, etc. Those Those things are recorded in the system. So uh, later on when we look at it, we can know what has happened. And then, uh, like we said, Bible college data, student data is also here, and that is handled uh, separately in a different way. Okay. So this system, the church management system, uh, is something very, very useful. Uh, um, uh, some of the features that uh, we are not using is once you, know, you could you could track um, financial transactions if you're able to, uh, uh, you know, maybe uh, get notifications from the bank or or just record it manually. We are not using that here because we don't track uh, individual contributions uh, at APC. Uh, uh, in some countries, example, the US, uh, they would track individual contributions so that uh, you send them a, you know, a tax deduct deductible receipt at the end of the year and they get tax benefits for it. Uh, that is, that's, uh, doesn't happen here in India and I, I don't know about other countries, but there are no tax benefits here. So we don't track 
you know individual contributions or those things um, but that's feature that's available here uh, you can also form groups and um, you know who uh, uh, you can volunteer team groups life groups all those kind of things you can form within the system and you know people could interact uh, around that and uh, like I, I may have mentioned it last time uh, we are we have plans to enhance this system, add our own features to this for uh, job search, for helping people exchange, you know, job openings and people looking for jobs. Uh, also for marriage, um, uh, you know, just just profiles to maintain profiles, and if people uh, uh, want to search or uh, connect with someone, they could do it. And of course, all of that will be done in a very uh, secure manner, right? So. The, the thought the thought here is that with this system, if when you collect uh, uh, the data and uh, and maintain the data of uh, uh, your congregation people in a system like this, uh, uh, a church management system, there's a lot of good things you can do uh, when uh, in serving the people. But of course, one very important thing is we need to protect their data, right? So, uh, uh, like like I mentioned last week, only authorized people have access to the data, and also different people can see only cert what we allow them to see, right? So that we control as administrators for the system. Now I logged in; I have administrator rights, so I can see everything. I can see; I can work with any group of data. But um, example is you can uh, restrict what people can see by their church location. So uh, uh, if you want to uh, say that this person can only see the data of people belonging to one particular church location, you can restrict that. Uh, if you, you know, so that way we have controls on who can see what kind of data and also uh, who works, who's able to work with what data, and we can give them, we can control, you know, whether they're able to update data, et cetera. Can they export data out or not? Oh, just one more thing I forgot to mention, which I wanted to do was, uh, we also can generate uh, 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 data views. We can also generate mailing lists, okay? I forgot to mention this. So, um, um, the ma our mailing list. So, you know, we have we, when we print books, uh, we send our books out for free uh, by mail, by post. So, we can generate mailing lists out of our system. So, suppose I, 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 I want to generate, uh, give, give me all the addresses of people in Bangalore that we have. Uh, we can generate that. Give me all the addresses of people in Delhi or people who speak Hindi. So when we print a Hindi book, that book has to go to people who speak a certain language, right? So we have we can generate mailing lists by language, which is what we normally do. So English book goes to people who speak English. Hindi book will go to people who speak English, Hindi, like that. So we generate our mailing list. We give them to the people who handle the dispatch of our books, they stick the labels, we print the labels and give it to them. So they stick the labels on those envelopes, send it to the post office, and that's how it goes, right? So this again, I just wanted to mention that uh, we can uh, you know, use this data for mailing list generation, which is very useful when you're doing, you know, mailing stuff, mailing things out, that's very useful, okay? so. Uh, I think that gives us an overview of the church management system and how, uh, you know, how there are many uses that you can put it to. And of course, there are, you know, you can come up with more ideas, more thoughts uh, on on what can be done. But any any questions on this on the church management system on just managing people data and uh, so on? Anybody has any thoughts? Any questions? Any questions on it? All okay. Okay. So uh, consider consider using this. It's a free 
free software. Thank God for uh, the people who've made it and made it available to uh, the body of Christ globally um, so that you could download it and install it and you know make use of it uh, for your church, for your ministry and extend it the way you want it. And of course, like we said, um, Rock RMS also has their own hosted solution. So if you don't have um, the people to do it for you, uh, but they can, you, you know, they have a paid service as well. So they could host it for you and you could just use the hosted solution as well. Okay. So yeah, thank you. I see your, your responses on the chat. So the, Next thing that I uh, would want to go into, and I, I have uh, shared this with you, is um, on um, uh, the staff management. Right. So we have the church management, which is managing the data of people in the church. Um, or in your congregation or in your ministry you know, so uh, if it's not a church then maybe it is the data of your donors or supporters or partners in the ministry that also can be managed right uh, so the same system can be used to manage uh, partners or donors so that's one side but now how about a software that to manage uh, people who are working for the organization, right? So uh, uh, I, I did, I think I did share about this uh, last year, I think, uh, but uh, we'll go through it again. So uh, generally we call this uh, human resource management system, right? So that means you're managing the your employees, your consultants, people are working for the organization, right? And that is also very important. Uh, um, uh, you know, you could use it for uh, a managing activity and work. Uh, you can use it for uh, uh, managing the leaves and the vacations that people take. Uh, you can use it for performance reviews. That means, uh, you know, whatever frequency, once in six months or once in 12 months, uh, you want to... Uh, assess the performance, get feed, get people's feedback and assess their work. Uh, it can be done for that. Uh, and, and a lot of other things, you know, basically managing the staff, managing the people who are working for the organization. There are a lot of things that you can do. So I will share with you uh, what um, we use, or at least the, uh, um, the software that's available. Uh, uh, that I would encourage you to use. And uh, this is not the only software product, of course, but uh, this is what we use. So let me share my screen. All right, so the product, yeah, I think you could all see my screen. Okay, so the product that we use is called Orange HRM, Human Resource Management Software. Uh, it, it has a lot of uh, features, you know, you can manage your people, of course, uh, and uh, then compensation, toilet, talent management, etc. cetera. And uh, there is, there is uh, uh, a free, uh, a free version available. Uh, and then there is also um, the uh, paid version available. So of course we are using the um, open source version. Oh, didn't mean to go there. So we are using um, the, where, Uh, yeah, so we're using the open source um, version, 
right? So we have downloaded our own and we've set it up for ourselves. But if you want, you know, they offer a hosted solution. So um, you could, you know, you could use it, use their uh, hosted solution, so on, okay? So uh, this is what we use, uh, orangehrm.com. So let's go to what we are using at APC. Um, so we have it set up under HRM. So this is our installation, our own installation, which we use, right? So, and, um, so this is very useful from uh, managing your staff, consultants, and so on, right? So all our staff, people are working for APC, uh, all our consultants uh, who are working, you know, uh, hourly, that means they're paid by the time they invest. They, all of them have their access to this system. And, uh, uh, and of course, uh, you know, what you're seeing here is an administrative uh, view because I have administrative access. Uh, not everybody will be able to see this, um, but I've logged in, I have administrative access. So I'll just show you some other things. So what we do is we, we have what is called projects, right? So basically um, there are different things people are working on. So different, basically the, these are by, uh, by uh, the role that people have. So there's the accounting, there's the audio engineer, the Bible college. Yeah. So we, we have all of these projects, right? Uh, that people can report their work against. And then under each project, there, there is activity, right? So under Bible college, there is all, all these things. Uh, these are activities. So when I do a Bible college lecture, I will report my time against this activity. If I'm preparing for the lecture, I will do this. Um, if somebody is doing some maintenance work for the Bible college, they will report their time against this. Uh, when we have a staff meet, we report our time against this, right? So these are all activities under this ministry area, which is Bible college, right? So uh, when we report our time, right? So for this, we report on a weekly basis. So we report against what we've done, right? So uh, I've reported my time till Tuesday this week. I didn't enter my time for yesterday, which I have to, uh, which I have to do. Um, now, um, so what did I spend my time on this week? On Sunday, uh, so this is the project. Uh, I was ministering at Sunday service about four hours, uh, was there before and after the service. So I spent four hours. Then on Monday, uh, I spent um, two hours. I was doing some, uh, search engine optimization work. Uh, I spent two hours lecturing at the Bible College. I spent about two hours preparing the Sunday sermon. And I spent about an hour and a half. Um, I was visiting some, um, this is buying the land that we're looking at to buy. So I spent about an hour and a half to go see a land and so on. So I spent about seven and a half hours doing that. Then on Tuesday, uh, I spent... Uh, Again, some more search engine optimization work. Uh, I did uh, two hours for the, two lectures for the Bible College, uh, three hours on preparing the sermon, and I did uh, some other planning coordination work, uh, interacting with. And usually, I could enter comments to say what I was doing, and coordinating some things uh, for the church and so on. So I report my time. So like this, you know, everybody reports their hours. So I have to enter yesterday's hours and I'll enter today's hours and so on. And at the end of the week, I, I submit my timesheet. So for every week, right, for every week, people have to enter their timesheet. So this way, you know, uh, one is it builds accountability. That means we all are reporting uh, what work we are doing. Where is our time being spent? Um, secondly, of course, uh, people get paid. Uh, they're based on their work, the hours. So uh, the uh, uh, accountant at the end of the month looks at the hours and then 
all the consultants are paid based on the hours they work. Um, and uh, for all the full-time staff, they have to work a minimum of 40 hours every week. And then if you work more than 40 hours, the extra hours are in chunks of four, you can take as compensation, uh, leave, comp off, and so on. So like that, you know, uh, this builds in some sort of accountability for all your staff and all your consultants uh, on, on the work that they are doing, right? So that's, you know, managing our timesheets. Then the other thing is about uh, leaves, right? So we can, when people apply for leave, we can see, you know, I, I'm seeing this as an administrator, not everybody can see this, um, you know, uh, people apply for leaves and uh, uh, the, the um, office manager, uh, she approves the leaves. And uh, of course, our HR person also sees it. He also approves, uh, he also can approve, but one of them will approve the leaves. The system automatically tracks all the leaves that people are taking, uh, what type of leave. So, you know, people can take comp off or emergency leave, ministry like vacation leave, so on. So it tracks. So every person or the staff uh, is entitled to a certain number of leaves in each category every year. So they apply for it, they use up those leaves, they can see what is their balance and so on. So example, I can see my leave uh, between 20, um, I don't know, it should not say 2023, it should say, yeah, so, if I look from 2021, one, I don't know why it's saying, it's not showing me. Sorry. Okay. Yeah, so I, I actually haven't uh, applied for any leave so i haven't taken any leave but i can see uh, my entitlement so what am i entitled to so uh, this year uh, i'm entitled to 20 days of vacation leave um six days in ministry and so on and this is my compensatory off so i'm entitled to take 43 days off this year i haven't used any yet um so if I use any of these leaves, if I use any of these leaves, it'll get deducted from me. If I take a vacation leave, it'll take it out of these 20 days. Uh, if I take a sick leave, it'll take it out of this or this, this, and uh, so on. So this is what I'm entitled to this year, uh, I have, but I haven't applied for any, so that's why it wasn't showing anything there. So uh, I can see, and uh, any employee can go and see what, you know, what leaves they are entitled to take for this current calendar year. So we work based on calendar year. So we can apply for leaves. We can see what it what it's um, what it's done. So or what what you can allow be allowed to take. So on. so like this. And then of course I can uh, look up uh, employee records. Um, so if I want to. Uh, uh, as an administrator, uh, you know, we maintain people's information, uh, staff information in here, uh, their start date, end date, all those kinds of things. So I can go and look up that information uh, and uh, manage people. Um, uh, so we can see, you know, everybody here, we can add new people and so on. So I'm not showing you that data, but that's possible. So we can manage our people here uh, and their personal information, so on their roles and what they're doing, so on. Uh, uh, and then uh, also performance reviews can be done. You know, uh, you can uh, um, do reviews of people, uh, put their ratings, et cetera. And we, you know, each, each, each organization can have their own way of doing it. Uh, we have our way of doing it, uh, criteria based on which we want to um, 
review people, assess people, and so on. So basically, um, this system, this human resource management system, uh, is very useful to take care of all your church staff and consultants or your ministry staff and consultants. And uh, again, the beautiful thing is this product is free. Uh, you can download it and you can customize it, set it up the way you want it and uh, make use of it, right? So I would strongly recommend that um, any church, any ministry um, make use of it. Uh, and it serves, uh, you know, serves many purposes. Uh, not only uh, does it create a sense of accountability, you know, amongst all the staff who are working, uh, but, you know, it's easy to manage. You know, you know who's on leave, so I can I can log in and I can see uh, who's on leave at um, any time or when they took leave, uh, so on so forth, right? So in the dashboard, typically, I would see, you know, if people had applied for leave, I would see it here, um, uh, or, and uh, I guess I can see it here as well. I think there would be, yeah. So these these are the you know, people have applied recent or so. Anyway, so it, it helps us in a lot of ways as we all work together and uh, do things together, okay? So I would definitely encourage you to consider setting this up for your church or ministry uh, to manage the people who are working in the organization, right? So we covered two software systems today. Uh, we talked about the church management system, which is the product is called Rock RMS. And then we talked about the human resource management system. Uh, the product there is called Orange HRM, which we are using. I'm not saying these are the only products, but uh, these are free open source products. And that's why uh, I would encourage that for your church, your ministry, for you to use. Okay, any questions? All right, I will put, you know, I'll, I'll make sure I mention these uh, products to you in that. I'm just putting a simple document together. We're just mentioning the product. So at any time in the future, uh, if you want to use, you could go and download it and use these products, okay? So we'll stop here for now. Um, tomorrow, I'll continue just showing you uh, some other products that, uh, that and other software systems that we use, uh, which you can um, think of using uh, for your church or your ministry uh, as the opportunities arise uh, in the coming days, okay? Um, let's close, we'll close in prayer. Thank you for joining the class and just, you know, just opening up yourself to uh, these, uh, uh, these things. Uh, I'm sure it'll be useful uh, in the ministry uh, in the days to come, All right? Okay, all right, who wants to pray and dismiss us? Uh, maybe Dave, would you like to pray and we can dismiss? I'm not sure, we can't hear Dave. Um, I'm not sure if you're. Absolutely. Okay, Karen, go ahead. We pray, Father God, come before your throne once again and thanking you, Father God, for all things, Father God, that today we learn, Father God, thanking you, Father God, thanking you for all things. Help us to move forward, Father God, and apply to your kingdom, God. Let's talk the day submitting to your hand, Father God, thanking you. Almighty Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 All right. Thank you, everyone. So I'll see you tomorrow. Uh, we have three hours together. I uh, look forward to that. God bless. Uh, enjoy the afternoon. Bye.